Hey guys, Jesse here from Urban Legends Antiques and this week we're doing something a little different. Um, we're still gonna do some furniture flipping, but I'm also gonna take you into my booth. So we've had really busy couple of weeks in our shop and we need to restock. So we're going to do kind of a divide and conquer. Chuck and I, he's gonna work on a piece, I'm gonna work on a piece. And then at the end of the video, we're going to take you into our booths and show you how we stage, how we do like a quick reset. Uh, I am going to show you kind of our process of what we do to get our booth, uh, I mean, camera ready, customer ready. We want to draw people into our booth and we're gonna show you how we do that. So let's get started. The first piece we're gonna be painting this week is this bench. It's on a glider that's broken and we didn't have the time to repair it. So we decided to remove the glider instead. Quick inspection of this bench and it's pretty dirty. Looks like it's gonna need a lot of cleaning before we can get to painting. This looks like some mildew just from being outside. So we're gonna bleach it. We took the glider portion of the bench off so it's no longer a rocker and now we're just tightening it down. All right, I wasn't messing around. We are really using bleach to clean the bench. This is the first step in cleaning it and getting it ready to paint. I wanna make sure that all of the mildew is killed off and gone before we paint it with anything. As you can see, the bleach is actually lightening the wood up and I really like this look. Um, but not for this bench. We'll save this for another, uh, another video. Okay, next step is we are going to clean it with the antibacterial spray just to kill off any other germs that may be floating around since this was a curb alert. And we are using Method um, antibacterial soap from Target. I'm not getting paid to talk about it. It's just what we had at the shop. It's lemon scented, which is my favorite scent. And we're going through and we're wiping it down. And then afterwards, we have a fine steel wool um, scrubber, which you guys have seen us use in some of our other videos. And we're using that to scrub it down with as well. This is just another angle of the scrubby on the bench. This is the fine steel wool scrubber. And you can see it's working really, really good. It gets down into all of the, uh, the grain of the wood and um, scrubs out the dirt and the grime from it being on the side of the road. We noticed while I was cleaning it that the bench was um, not as stable as we would like. It was kind of like shaking like the base was unstable and when we were looking at it we saw that one of the boards was a little bit twisted. So the answer to that is we went around and we loosened all of the nuts and bolts that were holding the bench together and then we pressed down on the arms of the bench and then tightened it back up in a new position and it stabilized the bench a lot more so that way it wasn't like shaky when you would touch it. And it worked really well actually. Okay, now we're going to prime the piece with Kills Mildew Resistant Primer. Normally I don't prime my pieces. When you watch me paint, I just go right in with the Chalky Chicks and start painting. But because this piece was outside and it already had some mildew growing on it, we wanted to prevent that from happening again. So we took an added precaution this time and we put some primer down. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at Urban Legends Antiques. And we also have a website, www.urbanlegendsantiques.com, with smaller items available for shipping. I do have some exciting news regarding our website. We are going to be carrying Chalky Chicks on our website um, for shipping. So if you see any colors that our videos that you like and you want to purchase, you can purchase them right from www.urbanlegendsantiques.com. Since we had been so busy this week at the shop, we decided that we were going to do a little divide and conquer and paint two pieces at once. So while Chuck was working on priming the bench, I was finding some hardware in our little hardware stash that would fit the drawer. There's the old one, it was broken. Here's the new one, it works perfectly. And I started painting this little side table in mountain green. It's a lovely sage color from Chalky Chicks. Chalky Chicks is low VOC and I don't, normally wear a mask when I paint with it. You guys have actually seen me painting pieces in my kitchen with the Chalky Chicks and I never have a mask on. But since we're outside in the garage and Chuck is spraying the 
um, mildew resistant primer onto the bench, I was wearing a mask for this. I am painting this piece pretty quickly. I'm trying to get it out of the garage so that way we can spray the bench. But I mean, honestly, it's normal for me to paint quickly anyways. Living here in the desert, uh, paint dries really, really fast, even in the winter time. So the good thing about the Chalky Chicks paint is that you can get pretty much full coverage with one coat. And then once it's dried out, you just walk around and look for spots that you may have missed and do touch up and you get like a nice, smooth, even coat. And it's basically like one and done, which I love. Okay, we are going with one of Chalky Chicks bestsellers, Denali. This is kind of hard to get. It's always sold out, so I got some. And I want you to see this blue. It's gorgeous. Look at that blue. So pretty. I spilled some of the Denali blue on the ground. Wasn't very happy about that. Um, but it happened, so just be careful when you're pouring your paint. <laughs> Adding in some water to thin the paint out for the sprayer. As always, it's one part water to three parts paint. Fun part, shake, shake, shake. You can see Chuck right now. <laughs> He's rolling his eyes off camera. <laughs> It is late at night and we're painting pretty late on a Saturday night. We were calling it our Saturday night date night. If you follow us on Instagram, you would have seen the post about that. Um, but we're just, you know, trying to keep the mood light while we finish up painting and getting these pieces prepped for the shop. Okay, this is Denali Blue by Chalky Chicks. It's a gorgeous color. No wonder it's always sold out. This is Mountain Green by Chalky Chicks. It's pretty too. This is early the next morning. I got up and went into the garage to, to stress this cute little table for the shop. Since we had to bring in a couple of pieces to the shop, I wanted to have everything ready for um, 10 a.m. when our shop opens. Chuck's turn in the garage this early morning, so he's out here spraying. Honestly, he's better with the spray gun than me, so um, I was just letting him spray the bench and the side table, and he does a good job. Okay, so Chuck had put these outside to dry, and when I was making my coffee, I went to go check on the pieces and saw them and decided, you know what, I'm gonna have a nice little sip of my coffee and enjoy our the fruits of our labor. My hair isn't done, and then Chuck caught me, so I had to get up. <laughs> But it was nice for a moment. <laughs> we gotta put it in the truck, huh? Yeah. Okay, the shop just opened. It's 10 a.m. on Saturday, and you can see I am now doing a reset and staging it since we had some pieces sell. There was like a couple of big holes in our booth. Here's a tip for all of you booth owners out there. Um, when people go to look at your booth, they normally scan left to right because that's how they read. In America, like I'm not speaking for people who um, read up to down or from right to left, but for America, the way we read, people scan left to right. So you want to have your booth set up with something eye catching on the left side that will try to draw them in. I also like to have a money wall. So what a money wall is, is it's the wall with the most eye catching stuff on it that people will shop off of. So obviously in this booth, the money wall is the one in the back with the big sage green cabinet. These are just a few tips and tricks that I'm giving all of you new booth owners that I wish I would have learned when I first started. Um, you don't have to do all of this. Obviously I didn't do all of this when I first started. I'm just trying to help out my fellow booth owners. Um, another one is like to tell a story in your booth. So I, I'm not very good at like telling a story, but what I am good at is, um, color blocking so if you look through my booth you can see that it's all got the same shades and tones of greens and blues even the pink is like a softer pink that blends well with it so now I'm just checking from the side to see like when someone walks past is there something eye-catching that they will see and you see me go in and adjust pieces and then step back out and check again
I'm staging this side table in here. It's the same color as the cabinet on my money wall and it goes with the whole color blocking thing I have been talking about. Now I'm putting my lamps in. I like to make sure that whatever booth I rent, I have at least one working outlet in it that I can plug lamps into. Normally there's overhead light that will shine down into your booth, but it casts like hard shadows. So I like to have lamps that give like a nice warm, cozy glow. Here's a quick walkthrough of my booth now that I've got it filled and staged. Don't forget to give my video a thumbs up and like and subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed this video. Also, let me know if you like this type of video where I'm giving tips and tricks for um, new booth owners. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed our video. Once again, I'm Jesse from Urban Legends Antiques and thanks for coming along for the ride. Say bye, Sophia. Oh. Say bye.